Second Corinthians ten, verse one: Words by the humility and gentleness of Christ I appeal to you, I Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you when away. So people call him, you know, people dis disparage, call him small, bold, not bold in person, but bold in letter writing. And in fact, they are accusing a number of other things. Verse two: I beg you when, that when I come, I may not have to be bold as I expect to be, towards some people who think we live by the standards of the world. Now, ESV has got a better translation for that. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence that count on showing against some who suspect us walking according to the flesh. The word "flesh" in in the Greek is "sarkos." Uh, it can mean the、uh, the worldly sense, which is full of lust and sensuality, or the actual physical body. But here, it's obviously of the、uh, fallen nature of humans. And with such accusation against gossiping,、uh, kind of you know, these are itinerant Jewish preachers, apparently Gentile preachers, and、uh, and that that's what now Paul is responding, reacting now. Paul responded, saying this, verse three: For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Immediately, Paul calls it as a spiritual warfare. I put out a video a while ago that many people would not think it is a warfare, but a character attack, and something that we're attacking and、uh, you know towards a person's integrity, and then.、Um, Whatever messages he carries,、uh, is a spiritual warfare.、Um, so, you know, to take things too lightly, it, it's just to miss the point. It's miss the point of the spirit of the Bible. The Scripture calls it. Paul calls it as a spiritual warfare. You know, I don't understand why so many in the evangelical world don't even want to touch spiritual warfare, especially, you know, I mean. Also in in the reform world, I hardly see or hear any of those words in writing or in a, in the lecture or in a, in a churches, except perhaps the charismatics. They're really going through them well. Okay, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. Straight away, Paul transitions into warfare. You see the language changed, transition right into warfare. You know, for though we walk in the flesh, what's the for? Gar in Greek means is connected to the verse before. So, what is the verse before? I count on showing my boldness against some who suspect us walking,、uh, walking to the flesh. I'm going to show them some boldness. What he means is going to discipline them, going to rebuke them, etc. Unless they they repent. Now, verse three, he said, "For though I walk." We walk in the flesh. We don't wage war according to the flesh. Paul is treating this as a warfare, guys. You know, verse one says, "I, Paul, myself, entreat you、uh, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I'm humble when face to face with with you, but bold towards you when I'm away. But in meekness and gentleness, verse two, I beg of you when I'm present. I may not to be so bold towards some of you." Uh, against、uh, to some of which I showing against, I'm going to show some boldness against some accusing us walking in the flesh. You know, you see that I beg you. This is the language of the greatest apostle of all times. You know, and, and no wonder it's a warfare. I beg you, because Paul, you know, Corinthian church to Paul is so important. Every church is very important to Paul. All the sheep of God is very important to to Paul. If you love the people of God, any slandering, any gossiping towards integrity past of the pastor or of the leadership needs to be dealt with quite firmly, and that is actually spiritual warfare. Call it as it is, spiritual warfare.